Welcome back, everyone. Hi, Jackie. Hello, Anne. <laughs> I hope that you all enjoyed your the networking opportunity of the break. And don't forget that we have a new poll up which asks about your winter outdoor dining solutions. Uh, and we'll be reviewing those results during our World Table celebration. Big topic of discussion, obviously. Um, but first, we're traveling the globe through flatbreads in our cook-along. If you haven't already, now is the time to get your dough out of the fridge and hopefully you have your mise en place ready. Jackie Cheezels is here as well, as you can see. And uh, Jackie, do you want to introduce our first chef? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, the first half of our awesome cooking duo today is Chandra Rum. You may have caught Chandra moderating a breakout panel on Wednesday exploring how chefs are reinventing themselves. But for those of you who aren't familiar with her, Chandra is a CIA grad and editor of Plate, an award-winning food magazine. She's also the author of the Complete Indian Instant Pot Cookbook, and she's joining us today from her home kitchen, replete with fabulous gray cabinets in Chicago. Hi, Chandra. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Very excited to be here. If we can't all be together in Napa, at least we can be together remotely. At least we can virtually be in your kitchen. I love it, yes. Um, and Anne, who else is joining us today? Our uh, other presenter, who I'm so happy to introduce, is a talented chef coming to us from St. Louis, Lauren Nalik. She's the chef owner of Balkan Treat Box, and it's fitting that Lauren is in her food truck today because that's where Balkan Treat Box started its journey, selling authentic street food style dishes inspired by the elaborate cuisine of Southeastern Europe. Along with her husband, Edo, Lauren opened the food truck's brick and mortar counterpoint in 2019. And this year she was named a James Beard semi-finalist for Best Chef Midwest. <laughs> Welcome, Lauren. Thank you, thanks for having me. Um, really excited to be here. I, I, I also um, second Chandra in saying that if we can't be together with, in, in Napa, that this is, this is it's great seeing everybody's faces. You've probably never had so many people in your food truck with you before, have you? <laughs> yes, this is probably my maximum. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you both for leading us on this global flatbreads adventure. Um, for everyone out there going along with us, Chandra and Lauren's recipes were emailed to registered attendees last week, and they're also available on our website with all of the conference resources. Um, we're going to have time at the end uh, and throughout the cook along for questions. So feel free to enter those into the chat. Um, or if you're brave also, you can share your audio and video at various points um, so that we can see how your version is coming along. At any time, you can double click on either of their images, um, Chandra's or Lauren's, to maximize their video if you need a closer look at what they're doing as well. Um, all right, and shall we start? Yes, let's dive in. Chandra, tell us about what you're making today. Yeah, so I was trying to figure out, um, because Lauren makes the most amazing flatbread, so I was trying to figure out like, okay, how do I represent India and do it well? And I really, a, kind of a lot of things started to come together at once. And um, so what I'm gonna do today is a naan, which is probably the Indian flatbread most people in the US are familiar with. Um, I will say, like, my family in India is from the southeastern coast, and so we never had naan, uh, like, at my grandmother's house or anything. We had dosa and puris and things like that. So naan is typically from northern India, and going along with um, staying in that region, I'm, um, I'm doing a naan that's filled with lamb kima. So that's a ground spiced lamb. And um, lamb is definitely uh, consumed a lot more in the northern part of India because that's where the mountains are and that's where the animals are. So, um, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, and I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be really good, especially since I've made like 50 of them in the last. Week. So. <laughs> I almost made. I almost made your recipe just so when we went to eat everything, I could actually eat what you made. <laughs> I was like, how can I do this? <laughs> you can hop in the car in four hours. You will have some some lamb kima naan. It will be not warm, but you know. <laughs> um, 
Well, Lauren, what are you making? Yeah, so we're um, doing a, um, a style of flatbread called pide. Uh, it is a Turkish style street food. Um, you can get them in restaurants as well. Um, but it's uh, kind of a cool, I remember the first time I saw it, it was just striking. It's just this like canoe shaped um, Turkish pizza. Um, and we cook it in a wood fire oven on the truck and in the restaurant. And um, it can be filled with all different kinds of things. So we're doing beef today, but it could be lamb, it could be goat, it could be chicken, vegetables, cheese. You can get very creative with it. Great. Um, and so I think now, Chandra, we have you starting to put together your dough, right? In our order of things. Yes, let me get started with the dough. So this is a really, simple uh, dough. It's, um, it's a great one to get started with if you're not familiar with making doughs. Um, and it's a very, it's a very easy one to work with. So I started out, I've got uh, some warm water, uh, a teaspoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of active dry yeast. And you can see here it's kind of foamy and that means that the yeast is blooming and it's activated and it's all good. So what I'm going to do is add in some ghee. Now, if you don't have ghee, you can certainly use clarified butter. Um, you can use melted butter. No one's gonna, no one's gonna arrest you here. And then I'm adding a little um, yogurt as well. And yogurt is going to serve to uh, kind of help boost along the fermentation here. So just kind of whisking those in, easy, easy. And then I've got a bowl here. I've got flour. Um, I'm gonna add some salt, and then I'm adding some cumin seeds here, which is certainly optional. Um, and I, I toasted these first just so they, uh, they have a little bit more flavor to them. As well, I'm adding another teaspoon of the sugar. And the sugar also just helps the fermentation, kind of boost the fermentation along. So like I said, this is pretty, this is pretty straightforward. Just add the liquid to the dry. Mix it up here. It comes together really quickly, really nicely. Um, very quickly, you'll see that um, it's starting to, to kind of come together in a little bit of a ball. And that's the point where I usually just kind of get my hands in there. You can see it's, um, if you've made this, you will have seen this is a very soft dough. Um, but like I said, it's one that comes together really easily, really nicely. I just kind of work it a little bit here. Um, people have asked, can you do this with bread flour? You absolutely can. You'll have a slightly firmer texture, but honestly, AP flour totally works. <laughs> So you want to kind of get it together in a nice little ball and then uh, and then you want to have it rise. So I um, this non recipe is actually from my instant pot cookbook because you can use the instant pot, uh, put a little water in there and use it on the yogurt function and it becomes this like perfect place to ferment dough. Um, just to let it rise, just how we do. I, um, I like to I have some dough ready for you. And actually hold it, um, put a small pot on the stove, put like maybe an inch of water in there, bring it up to a simmer, turn it off, and then put the dough in a covered bowl and let it hang out there. And what it does is just, it, it kind of accelerates, it creates that warm, humid atmosphere. So it's just sort of accelerating uh, the process of letting the dough rise. It's a little bit of a cheat, but you know, I'm not in my grandmother's kitchen in southeastern India where it's warm and humid. I'm in Chicago and it's November. And <laughs> we gotta it works. I did it. <laughs> yes, I'm going to do it today. <laughs> I did. All right, so I'll go ahead and start putting together this dough. Um, and uh, this is, you know, just like any of the basic dough. Um, I do use uh, bread flour. So flour, salt, yeast, um, 
we use a starter in the restaurant and um, not typically yeast in the summertime. When it gets cold, we will add a little bit of yeast, but this is our starter. Um, it just gives a really great flavor, um, really nice texture, and it's just something that we've kind of done from the beginning, mostly out of necessity because we were on the truck and it would be freezing cold outside or super hot. So we need to either like slow down the process or, you know, make it go faster. Uh, then some water and some ice. And I'm doing this with gloves just because we are on the truck. So um, I don't have a place to, well, I do, but that would be really noisy for me to turn on all the water on here. So same thing, you're just gonna bring the dough together. You'll do this in a mixer, which will break down the ice for you. Um, but you just work this dough. It's a really kind of, once it rises a bit or, or you let it rest, um, it's just a really soft, supple dough, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. So this is a lot like, you know, being a kid and playing with Play-Doh. I don't, I like to do it with my hands more than a mixer. Um, yeah, so it comes together like this and then by the magic of, so this is the dough when it's mixed and I'm going to pull what they call like a window pane for you. Um, so if you pick up the dough, then you can see through it and it just starts to tear, but the tears are super clean, but you should be able to do that. It's really elastic, just like a really nice supple dough. When it comes to this stage, you are going to portion it out. So your dough should be portioned in 250 gram portions, uh, which we have here, and waiting to be rolled out and filled. That, all that dough looks awesome. I think we've got some time here to pause and see if um, some audience members want to share their dough. So we've already got some people in, um, in our moderation panel who maybe have decided they don't want to join us after <laughs> all, it just disappeared. But if you are out there and making some dough and want to share with us, go ahead and click that um, share audio video button. I saw, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, yeah. Um, we were I able to come up. Said that they, they forgot to uh, take their dough out, but you can, you can, I actually, we work with it cold at the restaurant. So go ahead and keep working. Don't stop. It's fine that it's cold. Love it. Yes, Rebecca. So if you heard that from Lauren, go ahead and start, jump in with us here. And Sherry, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, can you hear us, Sherry? Oh, hi, <laughs> how you doing? We're here, you're live with us. <laughs> oh. Yes, I am. Where are you? Oh. It looks like it Hi. looks like you're um, I didn't make enjoying watching, as opposed to cooking along Hi. with us. But thank you for joining us today. I, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead Great. and get my camera now. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think we oh, took Sherry a little bit by surprise. Uh, and I saw your question in the chat and said that you've got uh, the non dough that's cold. Um, do this little cheater trick with like, put, you know, put it in a bowl, cover it, put it on, uh, you know, on the stove. Like I said, you don't want it hot, but just bring the water up to a simmer, like an inch or two of water, then, um, put the pot on top of there. You can see I've got mine going. Um, and then honestly, by the time we're done with the demo, we're going to be ready. It'll be fine. It's, it's, and no here. Lauren, we have a question from Oscar asking, what's the reason using ice in the dough? So the dough, the cold, because we're putting the dough into the refrigerator overnight to kind of ferment, we want to slow down the process as much as possible to develop flavor as long as possible. And the way to do that is to get that dough ice cold. So that way it's not overproofing over the course of the evening or overnight. And by the time it proofs in the morning, you'll have, instead of a really high puffy dough, you're going to have a slowed down, but like really tasty dough. 
And not something, I mean, not the ice part, but the refrigerating part. I've done that with no knead dough. I mean, obviously you don't get to the sourdough flavor, but you do develop more flavor. Is that with any type of doughs, would you say, or? I mean, I, I put dough, I put ice in a lot of dough. Um, unless, you know, it's one of those things where you are making it at home and you're waiting all day anyway. Um, so yeah, not in a sourdough, but most breads, if I'm mixing in a mixer, I will use ice because it gets the dough so hot that the force of the mixer warms it so much that it slows everything down. Mm -hmm. Great. That's awesome. All right, Chandra, I think we're ready for the next step for the naan. Okay. Um, so the next step is to actually cook the filling. So I'm going to take you over to my stove here. I've got some canola oil heating up here. And then I've got a pound of ground lamb. So just going to mess that up a bit and let that brown. Um, this is the wooden spoon that I got when I um, started at CIA. So, oh. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the wooden spoon that you get. It's complimentary with two years tuition. <laughs> it was a special package deal at that time. Do they not do that anymore? Okay, no. no, I'm just kidding. I'm sure they still do. <laughs> and I was just, I was just thinking that that if they don't do any more, people uh, admission was gonna get a whole bunch of letters because of you, Chandra. <laughs> well, let me just tell you, I don't know what it is, but it was like the spoons and the towel. I think my side towels. Like I only got rid of my side towels a few years ago because those things, like, they really, they really last, friends. <laughs> All right, so I've got this on high heat. And then I'm gonna mix in aromatics. So what I've got here is um, minced ginger, minced garlic, and minced shallot. Um, I'm just gonna put all of these in together and let the whole thing kind of mix. Yeah. Um, the ginger is actually the easiest thing for me because I, um, I actually always buy like a ton of ginger and then I mince it up in a food processor and freeze it in ice cube trays. So I always have little cubes of, uh, little life hacks. of, of, of ginger and it's really kind of amazing. Like it's just really, really good way to uh, make sure you've always got access to ginger because otherwise it, you know, it takes a minute. So Chandra, we've also got our fan here, Rebecca, up here with us. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, I can't hi. Really say hi. I'm so annoyed. I made the dough last night and then forgot to take it out this morning. And then now my laptop isn't working. So I'm just watching and giving you an audience, but I'm very excited. Oh, good. Good. Well, I'm glad you're joining anyways. And you'll be able to make this later. So super excited. Yeah, so, I was going to say, Rebecca, you've got the preview of everything you're going to do. Yeah. Chandra's now like walking through it for you in advance. Chandra, I'm in Milwaukee, so I'm not far off weather-wise. Oh, <laughs> I was in Milwaukee. Uh, I was in Milwaukee last week. Oh, when it was beautiful. It was like 70 degrees and everyone's sitting outside drinking beer. It was really nice. Um, so Thank I'm you so much for joining us, Rebecca. Yes, thank you for joining. Mm -hmm. So the lamb is mostly browned. So I'm going to add my spices. So this is a Kashmiri masala. Um, Kashmir is in the far northern part of India, northwestern part of India. It's on the Indian-Pakistani border, and there's a lot of um, debates between the countries over who owns it. But um, this is, again, the mountainous recent region where you'll have a lot more lamb, you'll have a lot more meat eaten. Um, and so this is a spice blend. Um, I purchased, but you can certainly um, mix up and there's a recipe for it. Uh, um, it's included in the recipe. Um, I really, this is actually a big part of what inspired me to pick this dish because um, at World of Flavors last year, um, I got to do a demo with uh, Floyd Cardoz, the wonderful chef who's inspired so many people in the US, particularly Indian. 
And uh, he had been working on uh, creating spice blends with a uh, burlap and barrel spice company. Um, Floyd very tragically passed away from COVID in March, but his wife, Barca, has continued the work with burlap and barrel. So I got some of his going masala and his Kashmiri masala, and I am blowing through them. They're so delicious and good. I highly recommend them, but I just wanted to, since CIA Worlds of Flavors provided me the last opportunity, I had to see him and talk with him about everything he was doing and, and catch up and everything. I wanted to just remember him and just do a little shout out to him in this demo. So, um, so I've got everything here. Got Kashmiri masala is mixed in. I'm going to add some tomato paste. This is the point where someone's going to ask me if this is authentic and I'm just going to glare at you. So, <laughs> Lauren and Chandra, I'm wondering if you guys can give Carissa Jones students a big shout out because they're watching over her shoulder and they're so curious and she can't share her screen because they're inside a juvenile juvenile hall. So, Hey students! Hi! Hi. Hi. <laughs> so glad you guys could join. I'm going to do my last step here. And this is, um, this is actually something I learned, you know, it's worlds of flavors. We're taking inspiration from all over the world. A few years ago when I wrote a Korean barbecue cookbook with the chef uh, Bill Kim, I learned um, from cooking with him that he uses, he often, instead of adding a lot of extra salt, to his cooking, he will use soy sauce because he finds that it adds salt, but it also adds like a much rounder, like more umami flavor. So I'm actually, and no, no one in it, no, don't ask me what my grandmother would do with this. My grandmother is vegetarian, she's not there. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna actually deglaze with some soy sauce. And then this is ready to go. So after, after I turn off the heat, just mixing in the cilantro, I'm going to transfer this to a bowl. And then I want to cool it down quickly so that I can use it very soon to fill up, uh, to stuff my flatbread. So I've got a nice bath ready. I'm more life at <laughs> and big shout out to your students, Scott, in you're Sacramento. Life hacks. <laughs> I know we've got Chandra's life hacks for warming up the dough, but cooling down the filling. And we'll have something for room temperature also at some point. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's I. I hope one day to have one of those life hacks where it's like, and here's how you do all of it with like. A twisty tie or something. Yes. <laughs> I've got lamb here. It's very warm. I'm going to let it cool off in the ice bath while Lauren does some hard work. Great. And let's <laughs> just see before that if Les Leslie and Lori are in our queue. So let's bring them up and see if they're still there to share their screen. I'll bring both of them up at the same time. If they're not there, all right, here's Lori. Hi, and you're in your kitchen. Yeah, I'm in my kitchen with my, uh, I have spent years trying to make it look like a Mexican grandma's kitchen. So, <laughs> now, and now it feels a little too cluttered for me, but um, so I'm doing kind of a, a dietary restriction version of the naan. So I have gluten-free naan dough that I made and I'm using turkey instead of lamb because I'm not supposed to be eating red meat right now. So, you know, Lori, you're bringing up such a great point that I meant to uh, reference before because um, absolutely do this with turkey, do it with chicken, do it with beef instead of lamb. Also, last week when we were doing a rehearsal, um, one of the people cooking along did it with lentils, oh, lentils. which I just think would be so fantastic. And, um, you know, that certainly fits in with uh, a lot of Indian cooking. So, absolutely go for it. Oh, I just wanted to say that I didn't have the Kashmiri spice mix, so I used the recipe this morning uh, mm -hmm. to blend, and it smells so amazing with the freshly toasted spices. Oh, isn't it the best? And yeah. You have to your spices, guys, because there is actually a thing in, you know, like 
if, if, an, if you make food and an Indian says, oh, the spices are a little raw, that, that is, that's like a love kind of compliment, just a yeah, compliment. So um, it's great to have it toasted in the blend. And then of course, when it's mixed up with the meat, um, it's toasting again. That's like a second level of toasting uh, called banu that, um, uh, that kind of makes sure you're toasting, you're getting all the flavors out. Um, so Lori, yeah, I'm glad that you're, I'm glad that you're playing around and doing the subs and um, we'll see how the gluten-free dough works. It doesn't stretch very much. You know, it's okay. It's okay. Like this is a pretty forgiving dough, I feel. So, um, and actually, also, it's a it's a main recipe that normally takes normally makes eight naan, but I cut it down to six portions for this, so that you've got plenty of dough to sort of like, play around with and uh, use to wrap around uh, the meat or the filling. Thank you guys Thank you so much for joining us, Lori. Um, we need to, unfortunately, we need to get some of the um, other dough going. So Lauren, and apologies in advance to Leslie, we brought you up um, and you are a diehard cook along person. So I know we're gonna jump back to you in just a little bit, but let's um, chat with Lauren about her fillings and her ingredients. Sure. So we want to say hi to Scott Rice's students in Sacramento. Hi, guys. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> hi. Um, so I have a mixer here and a stick blender. You can use a Nutribullet. You can use a um, food processor, whatever you have to kind of break down vegetables and these ingredients. Um, I'm going to do them in this deli uh, or pint cup. <laughs> you can put that camera down. So I'm going to angle the camera down a little bit so you can see. There you go. So we're gonna add, we've got the diced onion, we're gonna add garlic, we're gonna do salt, um, black pepper, uh, also doing soy sauce for kind of a rounded out flavor. Um, so doing some soy sauce. Thank you, Chandra, for the, for the other life hack. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we're gonna add in water and that's gonna help get it going. It also will help in our step where we're kind of putting the meat on the dough. Um, I'm gonna add Aleppo pepper. This has kind of got, gained a lot of popularity here, I would say uh, mainstream in the last few years. It's just such a great fruity, mildly spicy, oily, like pepper. Like it just gives such great round chili flavor. Um, we use this a lot in the restaurant. So I'm gonna add that in. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up. Just until it gets all the way pureed. It's gonna take a minute. It smells good. <laughs> I know, I think the real drawback with this virtual cook along is almost obviously the food, but also the smells, like this whole process to know how amazing it must be smelling for both of you and to not be able to share in that. It's so sad. And it's great okay. to hear that in the chats too, those of you who are making it, how good your kitchen smell. Yes. All right, so now we're gonna take um, our filling of choice, whether that is beef or lamb or lentils or turkey, whatever you're using. Um, we're gonna put that in a mixer, a stand mixer with a paddle attachment. We're gonna add the puree here. And you wanna make sure you get all of that in there. And then add some herbs. So we're gonna add some to the parsley at the end. And then we're gonna come up and this is gonna mix for about four minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and let that mix, and then we're gonna kind of move on to the shape, the shaping of the dough. So I'm gonna go ahead and flour my bench. And then the doughs that have already been pre-portioned, I think we talked about these a little bit earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and take uh, one of those. I'm actually gonna do two at a time. So you're gonna set it down on the table. You wanna flour the top. And you're going to make a oval shape. And it doesn't have to be that big. Like this is maybe six, eight inches. 
um, long now. These will get longer once we fill them and shape them. We just want to get the dough ready for the filling that's mixing now. Um, penis shapes are different depending on where you go. Um, you can make a round pide. Uh, you can make a flat pide. You can make a stuffed pide, like a calzone. Um, it depends on the region. It depends on just your preference, too. Uh, I just find these to be really striking. It's one of those things where you're going to make this and the technique for making this is, um, you know, it, it takes practice, but it's just important that you understand that, like, they're all going to be different. Like, it's just like if you were making um, a Neapolitan-style pizza. Not all of them are the same. The dough is going to stretch differently. It kind of takes on its mind of its own, which kind of makes it cool. So um, I'm actually going to speed up this process a little bit by kicking up my mixer. So stop it. I think you can do that. Yeah. So we're going to go a little faster. And you really want the meat to kind of break down to a paste. When you bake this, it's going to shrink a little bit. Um, so you want to have it spread as, as thin and as much as possible over the dough. Uh, okay. And Lauren, I hope you don't mind me saying so, but I think everyone will relate. Um, the noise you're hearing is because <laughs> something <laughs> fell on Lauren's mixer and the bowl is no longer perfectly round. And who doesn't have a, a perfectly round bowl here, right? I think those are the kind of things that happen to all of us. <laughs> Actually, it really sounds like someone's in the background like beatboxing. And if that's <laughs> anything, then <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so we are still mixing. We're going to go ahead and stop the mixer, and I'm going to show you the filling. So I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there you go. All right. So <laughs> see the ball with the D shape. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is wet our hands and this is going to help with kind of the shaping and the distribution of the meat on the um on the full bread so you're going to put the meat on in a long kind of kind of like a, a hill and you want to go corner to corner and as you're doing this lauren i'm just going to remind everyone also um Again, that you can double click on the screen or on Lauren's sort of image um, to maximize that video on your screen so that you can get a little bit of a closer look at how she's forming her boat here. Yeah, so, okay, so now you're gonna go from the center of this kind of uh, dome of meat and you're gonna take it and half of it, you're gonna push towards the center. You're gonna notice that the dough is gonna kind of stretch um, out further, which is what you want. And so you still have quite a hill here. So you're gonna push out away from you and now you're gonna push back towards you. You're gonna concentrate on keeping a lot of the meat in the center. So there's still a dome here and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm just gonna push it out again, push away from you all the way to the ends. Water to help you move that meat so it's not sticking. You pull back towards you. And then once you get to here, you're going to push it down. So now we're pushing the meat out so it's an even layer. All right. So let's shape these. So I like to kind of make sure my dough is not sticking to my bench uh, at this point and I just move them around a little bit. But now you're going to start at the corner and you're going to fold towards you and kind of pinch the end here and then keep folding. But you're not going to press it down into the meat. The only place you're going to press it is here on the ends. And then you're going to come back away from you and just kind of push it up. You're not wanting to, you don't want the dough to stick to the meat so you can have a nice like rise on the sides of the dough. That's one. 
and then we'll come up, pinch, pinch, and then you're going to put it around. And Lauren, you had told us you can put cheese in the edges too. Is that right? Yes, <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> I have some cheese. I will put in this one. Thank you, Anne. All right, so this is a blend of like a mozzarella style cheese and a feta. And I kind of like to dot them around the edges. Um, my favorite part to want to eat this is the corners. So like this end right here. So I like to make sure that, you know, I often tell people like, you should eat it like this. So their first bite is just, you know, your eyes roll in the back of your head. That's kind of one of those moments. <laughs> Lauren, how many, right. how many tries did it take you to like learn to shape them? Because right? <laughs> every time I try to make them, they're like these sad, narrow little boats. Like they're like canoes. I was, yeah, well, they're supposed to look like that. But I was actually looking at old photos from when we first, um, when we first did the food truck and they were like skinny and long and they were not very attractive. And I remember all we had to serve them on was like paper plates. So they were like hanging off the plates on either side. Anyway, yes, it, it takes a little bit of time, but I mean, your shape is really not important. It's the flavor and everybody's boat is going to look different. I think we talked about that. So anyway, now you're just going to kind of lift your dough up onto the peel. And then this is kind of what you're looking for. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it too. So we're going to feed this into the wood-burning oven on the truck here. Um, if you don't have a wood-burning oven, that's just fine. Um, we have a, let me push this up a little bit. You can use a grill. Um, you can use your home oven. Uh, on a pizza stone. So you're just going to crank your oven up as hot as it'll go. Um, I recommend a stone or an inverted sheet pan. Um, before you put it in, I would turn on your broiler and let it get, I mean, as hot as possible. Turn it off, put it in, let it bake. When you see that the meat has kind of like shrunk in a little bit and you've got a little bit of color, you can turn the broiler back on and get yourself some nice leoparding or black spots to kind of get that nice charred feeling that you would get from a wood burning oven. We're lucky enough to have one here, but like I said, a, a charbor oak grill would work. Um, your gas grill would work. You could put a stone on a gas grill. You could put a pizza pan on a grass, gas grill. And then you're gonna wanna peel. If you don't have a wooden peel or a pizza peel, again, an inverted sheet pan works really, really well. So, I'm going to feed these into the oven, and I think Chandler's going to do something cool. I'm going to do something cool, and then we'll pull these out in just a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to sit and ponder why I don't have a wood-fired oven, and uh, <laughs> we're, all going to, we're all going to have that moment. So I am actually going to show you how to roll out the naan and stuff them. Um, ice baths, they totally work. This is not a real pan. It's good. We're going to use it right away, so I'm not worried about that. But um, I, if, if my old skills teacher is out there watching, I would like some sort of extra credit situation here. <laughs> um, so the dough that's been uh, that's been hanging out, like I said, it's really soft. It's so easy to use. Um, we're just going to divide this into six. I've got it on a floured countertop here. Don't be afraid to use a little flour. Um, you can roll it out, but I find that the dough is so soft that it doesn't need that extra pressure that you get from a rolling pin. And I like sort of patting it out. It's going to be about, um, I'm going to say it's a third to half an inch thick. And then what you do is just, um, one of the other great tips, Lauren, I got a life hack for you. <laughs> yes. Um, can't wait. <laughs> friends, measure your hand span. Measure your hand span, and then when you're rolling out dough and making pies and things like that, you never have to sit there and measure. You can just be like, oh, well, this is, my hand span is eight and a quarter inches. And um, it's also very helpful in hardware stuff. 
Wow. <laughs> wow. Otherwise, I don't know how to do anything, friends. So I'm going to mound some of this, some of this filling in the center here. And then it's a little bit like when you're making any kind of like a bow or something like that, you're just sort of folding the filling up. So it looks like this, and then a little bit more flour, flip it over and just sort of pat it out. To be, I think I said like six inches, five inches. So pat it out there. You can see, um, I can see like a little bit of like the, um, the lamb, but it's not pushing through. And then I can see the cumin seeds that are in the dough. So I'm in an apartment in Chicago. We're going to get to the true confessions right here. I don't have a tandoor oven because that would involve digging a pit into the apartment below us, having 700 degrees. It would be a thing. I don't have the ventilation for it. With two cats, they would absolutely find an opportunity to jump down into the tandoor. It's just not going to happen. So this is not going to be traditional, but it's going to work. Um, I'm using a carbon steel pan here. You can use carbon steel. I also use cast iron. I honestly picked the carbon steel because it's got a um, lower rim and it's easier for me to hold up like this. So I've got one over here. I personally... I maybe eat too much butter, but um, so I melt a little ghee in here. Um, normally, people will say don't do that, but you know what? It's Friday. Life is short, right? Life is short. 2020 has been brutal for all of us. So you're, all you need to do here is a sear because the dough itself, because the nature the nature of it being AP flour or any other kind of softer flour, um, you don't have to necessarily uh, work to, uh, to get that cooked through. And the filling, of course, is cooked through. So, so it's golden brown. So I do have my steel pan, um, or like I said, I'll do this with cast iron as well. I have that going on high, high heat. Yeah. It just takes a square. You can, if you want to do this, you can start them. What I would do is have a, um, if, you're, if you're cooking this volume for uh, a large volume and you want to serve it immediately, what I would do is have a sheet pan in the oven. I would go for a hot oven. I would go for like 400 maybe. I would sear one side of this to get it going and then transfer, just transfer the, uh, the non into the oven um, with the other side down so we can, we can kind of finish cooking on that side. Um, you don't want to keep it in there too long because uh, you are trying to sear on both sides with that method. Otherwise, you can sear on both sides um, on the stove and then just transfer it to like a 250 oven just to kind of hold it for a bit. So there are options. Um, also, because I mentioned that I made like 50 of these, trying to practice and make sure I had this right. Um, I did last night pull one out of the freezer and I threw it into a, uh, I threw it into a 450 degree oven because I was baking some bread. And um, in eight minutes, it was heated through straight from frozen and um, it was really good. I'm not gonna lie. So Chandra, um and we agree with that. Keith in the chat is saying it's great to see you as a chef. And it's true. We think of you as a great writer, but you're also a great chef. So putting that good CIA education to work. And also people are um, revealing their uh, hand span in the chat. <laughs> I will just tell you, I had two guys at like Lowe's who were totally talking down to me and they were like, no, I don't, I don't think that's, I'm like, I think that's, that's an eight inch like piece of pipe. And they were like, no, that's not eight inches. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea? And then they were like, oh, wow. And I'm like, mm -hmm. and I was like, that. yeah, I was thinking it's got uses for cooking and baking, but also like Ikea, you know, like measuring yeah. if it's yeah. going to fit. Yeah. 
And you, know, you don't you need that little tape, that paper tape measure anymore. It's all in your hand. I mean, okay. shout out, like CIA, you learned some things. You really and, and Lauren, let's go back to you because you have beauties in front of you. Yeah, they came out really lovely. Um, so I wish you could smell this. Um, so basically, you might have a nice crust that comes up like this. You might have one that overlaps more so you see less of the meat. Or you might have a really open one where you see kind of where the meat pulls in from the side. Um, I don't know if you can yeah, yeah. see that. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the things that I think that stuck with me the most during my travels was the fact that almost everything I ordered, they would come out with this like hot, boiling, like sheep's milk butter that they would pour over things and it was just perfectly browned and added like this nuttiness and just so much flavor, like a flavor bomb. Um, so trying to replicate that kind of taste and that feeling and, and the thing that I love so much was just to kind of take some really like deeply browned butter, like really deeply browned butter, and you're going to kind of brush the crusts. Well, you're not going to kind of do it. <laughs> so you're going to brush the crust. I mean, be generous. Um, if this was chicken or some sort of meat that didn't have this much fat in it, I would also kind of drizzle it over the top like that. Um, but any sort of kind of like fatty ground meat will give you enough in there. Although I don't think there's ever enough. I mean, I, I yeah, it's just, you. it's so decadent and so that part of the world and the, they just know how to eat. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is kind of what they're going to look like. And garnish is something too that, speaking of world of flavors and being around the world and kind of what we do at the restaurant, um, the way we garnish it isn't at all traditional. Um, traditionally, we'll get to that part, but I use um, Kaimak, which is kind of like a clotted cream, it's very similar to that. It's like if feta, butter, and maybe like yogurt had a baby, this would be very much. Um, Ivar, which is a roasted red pepper and eggplant spread. So what we like to do is we get the Ivar and we put three, this is the way we do it at the restaurant. And then we finish it with a little, of the Kaimak. I'm just gonna you're a little in, bit you're in a here. Track, but you're still gonna canal. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little canaling. It's cool. It's cool. I'm getting fancy. And before I forget, oh, sorry, but before I forget, um, oh, no, remind ahead. Carissa was asking how to pronounce the traditional name of the of the dish, the one that's in the recipe. Pide. Pide. Okay. Okay. Yes. And then these are a combination of herbs of parsley, mint, and dill. And so we garnish. This is like exactly how you, Shandra knows, she's been, it's exactly how you get at the restaurant. Except so, at the restaurant, like, first of all, you wait, there's like a line out the door. So, <laughs> and then we just start, like, you get in like panic mode of like, oh my God, what if, what if there's an unlucky day? And um, I find it good to just like shoot anxious looks. So. <laughs> yeah so another way another way to eat it is to uh do like a sumac onion salad so what you do at the restaurant is like kidney sliced uh onions a little bit of fresh lemon juice really good sumac really good sumac and you mix that together with a little bit of salt and you would kind of rip this apart and eat it with your sumac onions, but you could put that there, a little lemon zest. So the fattiness of this dish, like just gets cut with this nice kind of citrusy and the bite of the fresh lemon. And you probably see it traditionally with some sort of lemon wedge on it. And then again, like some fresh herbs. Oh, gorgeous. Ah. So that's it. That is amazing. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, we need to get to cooking or finishing Chandra's um, 
uh, non also so that we can then dig into Lauren's pita. So let's have you finish up your dish, Chandra. Okay, well, friends, I'm from the butter. So, um, what I'm gonna do here is a final step. Um, it would be quite a bit of Indian cooking. Um, it's called, it has different names in different regions, uh, chunk, uh, tempering. Um, what I'm gonna do here, I'm heating up some, uh, some, some ghee. Again, you can use clarified butter. I think at this step, you can even just use uh, regular butter. I've got a little bit more of this Kashmiri masala. And by the way, um, I'm often asked if you can't find Kashmiri chili powder, how to sub for it. Do not use cayenne pepper, <laughs> okay? Um, you want to use a mix of three parts regular paprika, one part uh, cayenne. So, um, and also realize that um, Kashmiri chili powder is supposed to be very mild, but that varies from brand to brand, so try it. So what we're gonna do here is toast the last bit of the Kashmiri chili powder, and I've got some ground toasted cumin. Um, so we've got that toasting, and then we're going to add some curry leaves to it. So the curry leaves are gonna sputter as soon as I add them. This is one in Indian ingredient, I'm gonna say, for which there is no substitute. So you cannot use basil, you cannot use bay leaves, you cannot, no, you have to get curry leaves. Um, what I do, I live very close to a Patel Brothers, so I actually buy extra and stash them in the freezer just in case there's some sort of curry leaf emergency crisis or whatever. Um, I like to tear them up into pieces, and then I'll show you here. They're going to, they're going to sputter. Um, and that's just because of the... Uh, the liquid in there interacting with the hot spices. And then what I do is just kind of pour it over on top um, of, of the cooked naan. So kind of pouring this over, it's, it just adds more butter and spice. And, you know, it kind of makes the naan like the cousin to the pita, and they're both along the spice route. And I love Lauren, and I'm always trying to cook. I'm just saying, does this make this family? <laughs> <laughs> are we now related? I love this. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Excellent. We'll, we'll zoom over Thanksgiving and um, maybe get into an argument about something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Family drama. Yeah. Uh, Carissa was asking what constitutes really good. Sorry. Oh my God. I just um, dumped this on my computer. So. Careful with your angles. I'm very excited. It's okay. It's my work computer. There you go. Um, sumac. So really good sumac. I think it's just about talking to your international market or resourcing, like where you resource it. You can get, uh, sumac is very uh, citrusy and it should have a tang to it. And a lot of times if it's old or it's been sitting or it can be dry and not, it doesn't give the kick that you need it to. So I just think it's really important to source like a good sumac. And that is just, like I said, talking to your international market, local, or um, finding a good source online. Yeah. yeah actually, the, that, okay. the brand you were talking about earlier has a really good one. Oh, Burlap and Barrel? Yes. There's yeah. really good. Um, I'm, I'm going to echo that for Indian spices and ingredients because um, you want to you want to shop somewhere that has a lot of turnover, so they're always getting in fresh product. And I'm just going to say, like, I actually I buy like a pretty like standard, not fancy um, uh, ghee. Uh, the brand is Swad. That's the house brand at the Patel Brothers grocery stores. There's one exactly eight minutes away from my apartment. So I tend to buy that because I know that they're going through it quite a bit. 
I did buy a fancy bean once at a Whole Foods and it was kind of off. And I was like, yeah, because that thing has probably been sitting there on the shelf for eight months because like no Indian is going to go to Whole Foods to buy. <laughs> we're way too cheap now. So, we're well, I, I, I feel the need to be like, you know, we are in the show me state here. So show me your penis. <laughs> <laughs> this is the other people's penis. Yeah. All right, um, let me take care of some procedural stuff before we keep uh, going. Okay. <laughs> um, so we're going to formally end the cook along part to go to the eat along part. So for all of you who've been um, in the moderation panel waiting to bring up on screen, we will bring you up now. And any of you who haven't yet uh, shared your audio and video, please do that. Um, we're going to have a look at our poll results for winter dining. Big questions for restaurateurs for sure. Space heaters and blankets have a slight lead over a tent closed on as many sites as local regulation allow. Um, and uh, only 8% uh, of respondents are saying each table in its own plastic bubble, which to me seems like a very wise decision to not do that. So, um, and Lauren, when we sit down for lunch, we'll also we'll want to hear what you're doing for in for outdoor for winter dining, right? Yes, yeah. All right, so are we sitting down for lunch? Leslie's joining us. <laughs> <laughs> I know Leslie, you are so patient. Thank you for being so patient. But tell us about um this process for you. Sure. Um so I'm coming off of a eight hour shift and just scrambled home to make this in time um with a talking about bad or old equipment a stand mixer that gets very screechy so my poor husband had to put up with that for about 20 minutes last night um but yeah i mean rolling out the pita was really easy we've got a great turkish community in raleigh and Cary area so we get to eat a lot of turkish food um and it, it was very easy to put together. You know, just like you said, crank the broiler up, stick it in. I don't, I have a con uh, conventional oven at home. So, you know, just crank the broiler up, stick it in there and it comes out no problem. Really easy to nice, mix. Nice. I did, um, I couldn't scramble fast enough to get the Aleppo pepper down from the cabinet. So I just kind of did a combo of um, smoked paprika and chili flakes. To, oh, yeah. Great. Um, and then, Again, scouring the cabinets, I had some feta cheese. So feta and mozzarella, just kind of chuck that in there and hope for the best. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Love it, Bye. thank you so much, Leslie. I know we had some other people who had been patiently waiting to join us as, as well. I'm not sure if you're still out there, but anybody who's out there now, if you've got questions for Chandra and Lauren, you just want to join the Love Fest, you want to ask for additional life hacks, um, we didn't call it out, but I do feel like there was an additional life hack in there also with Chandra talking about if you don't have the Kashmiri spice, right? Like how you can sub it. So we'll see what other life hacks we can get out of Chandra. If you want to come up and tell us your hand span, I don't have something to measure right now, but that's the first thing I'm going to do once I get a ruler. Um, please come up and join us or put your questions also in the chat if you have additional questions. Um, Lauren, I feel like you're you're sitting there with your beautiful today also. We can't eat it, but maybe you are ready to dive into that as well. I'm giving you formal I'm permission for now. I'm giving you the approval. Oh, yeah. there we go, Anne. So, so what is Chandra, it? The, Chandra, the thing with the chili, uh, with the Kashmiri chili, that's exactly what we do at NC State. We have okay. a lot of North Indian students um, on both of our campuses and um, we had to learn really quickly how to substitute that out when we did a 500 person wedding about four years, three years ago. And it's like um, a mid lane size wedding for Indians. So, yeah. 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 Um, yeah and, and she specifically wanted Kashmiri. So, for the event, we bought it from a local vendor, but then we couldn't get it regularly on the menu yet. So, yeah, that three to one has been key. And then extra on the side for anybody who wants to add extra. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> I know I love that money side. The, the, yep, delicious, right? Good. 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 Good.
So good. Let's see. Oh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Oh, and our Hi. chef Tony is going to join us. Very cool. Here comes Tony. There you are. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Tony. I'm down here with Caitlin. Here's mine. It doesn't look as good as yours. I have to tilt it. I don't know. Can you? Oops. Those. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, it looks amazing. Yeah, well, I haven't talked at all because I was like, I wish I had the what, Kymac or Kymac and I. Yeah, I was like, oh, you can also, have it's not traditional, but you can use tomato sauce if you have any. Okay, okay, great. No, it's really, good. really fun. And I have some non, but they're, I think I'm burning them right now. <laughs> because obviously, oh. these are super cheaper. She wasn't content with yeah, only one it. recipe. So, but yeah, anyways, fun to see you guys. Really, really fun to watch. I kind of, you know, Caitlin's down here with me and she's like, at least I get to smell everything because that like, <laughs> makes it so much better. You know what? Don't forget smelling. I want to eat those things. Like, who cares? I want to eat your food. <laughs> All right. It well, is. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. And I feel like we should just give a shout out to Tony for those of you, so many of us, we, or so many of you out there, it's your first time joining us for Worlds of Flavor, so you don't actually know, but during our in-person conferences, Tony is like our culinary, I mean, she's our conference chef, so she is overseeing all the production of the guest chefs coming in, um, but also producing amazing food for all of us to eat and while at the same time running around getting ingredients organizing what's going in the cold truck with all of these chef, all of these chefs we brought in from all around the world handling last minute orders for things and whatnot so big props and big shout out to tony even though we're not doing that this year she's still been behind the scenes cooking lunch for us every day actually so yay tony Tony's the best <laughs> Uh, what else do we have? Do we have it? Oh, uh, we have a technical question. Uh, Lauren and Chandra, are you filming yourselves or you have a helper? It looks great. Or it worked great. I have a helper. <laughs> Hi, Carmen. <Hi, Norman. laughs> that is Carmen, my general manager, and she's also a SOM. So now she's also a audio and visual uh, Master. We, so, do you mind yeah. also just indulge me and um, turn the laptop so that we can see the floor lamp that you have going on in the truck also? <laughs> 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 I'm pretty, that's amazing. I love it. That was, uh, that's also uh, a life hack. <laughs> <laughs> a double floor lamp for your lighting inside your food truck. I, mean, I, I love it. Um, I was checking out Instagram before we started this morning and I saw that Katie Button actually who presented last night showed um, what she did to get the beautiful lighting and her camera set up. So I kind of feel like after this we need to have a, a compilation of everybody's like, you know, hop in set up their video set up to do the things. <laughs> great idea. Mine is like, um, I just did this myself. Um, but we've done, you guys have been so great with like all the tech rehearsals. So I'm like, okay, I know exactly which cookbooks I need stacked on each station so that I, um, hit the right angles there. And, um, my husband, uh, locked the cats up. So every now and then they're, they're, uh, in a room and every now and then I'm like, I can hear like someone's knocking on the door. <laughs> You're not coming out for this. But so uh, next time, um, Chandra, in, in addition to your recipe, we'll specify what books you need for this specific setup. So it'll be like, you know, this book on top of this book on top of this book. We'll get you at the right height to do to do this setup. The food lab is a fantastic book. <laughs> so much information and so much so much thickness, so much height for your camera. So, I'm sitting on the Alinea cookbook right now. 
<laughs> Actually, I, I'm waiting for, I want Lauren to write um, her authorized autobiography and call it What Shape Is Your Boat? And uh, <laughs> What shape is your boat? <laughs> I'm, I'm working on a better boat for my life. Okay. You're the only person I'd work with that on, so <laughs> you have to come up with all the puns. I think, I think that is the book that is coming out of this. It's going to be What Shape Is Your Boat with a forward by Chandra, um, including <laughs> life hacks for your life, right? Yeah. Right. The life hacks like the introduction. Free the cat. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing. Cat. I mean, it's it's really it's 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 a lot. It's a lot. It's cat. It's cat. All right. I I am afraid, just like Worlds of Flavor itself, this has passed far too quickly, and I'm getting the word that they're gonna cut the feed on us soon, or rather, <laughs> that we need to stop just chilling and hanging out with each other and laughing. Um, but it has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much to both of you for sharing not only your flatbreads, but also your humor, your talent, your grace, your charm. Um, such a pleasure. Thank you so much to everybody out there. Um, please give a very virtual round of applause to our amazing chefs here and to Anne. Um, for those of you out there, we've still got the expo going on and the networking. Um, we're not totally killing things now, but we've apparently had too much fun here now, so we have to take, we have to say goodbye. But thank you again so much to everybody. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Lauren, you're amazing. <laughs>